The years between 1830 and 1860 were composed of an interesting debate between biologists, chemists, and physiologists. This debate revolved around the topic of alcoholic fermentation and was between what were called the mechanists and the vitalists. The mechanists, led by Justice von Liebig, believed that fermentation was a process that happened because of the components of microorganisms and how they interacted with sugar molecules. The vitalists, on the other hand, led by Louis Pasteur, believed that fermentation was part of a vital action of yeast fungi cells and was bound to living organisms. To the vitalists, fermentation was not possible without living yeast cells, but to the mechanists, fermentation could be synthesized if the right parts of the yeast cell were extracted, not requiring the living organism itself to conduct the process. Many experiments were done on fermentation during this time period, but the experiment that settled the debate just so happened to be an accidental discovery in 1897 by a German chemist by the name of Eduard Buchner. Buchner was born in 1860 in Munich, Germany into a rather successful family. His father was a physician and professor of forensic medicine, and his mother was the daughter of the treasurer of the royal court of the German monarchy when it began in 1871. Shortly after enrolling into high school at the age of 12, however, his father died of a stroke. When he was 17, he began his studies at the Ludwig Maximilian University, where his father had worked before his death. During his time there, he did many different things, he served a short stint in the army in 1878, worked as an intern for the chemist Emil Erlenmeyer, worked at a jam making and canning business, and also studied fermentation at the Carl Wilhelm von Nageli Botanical Institute under direction of his older brother Hans, who was a bacteriologist there. In 1884, Buchner began his postgraduate work under the guidance of the renowned chemist Adolf von Bayer. There, he published his first paper on fermentation, and later in 1888, received his doctorate with a thesis in synthesis of pyrazole. In 1890, he became von Bayer's assistant, and three years later, became a lecturer at the University of Kiel. Three years after that, he moved to the University of Tübingen as a professor and researcher. It was at Tübingen where he made his groundbreaking breakthrough with fermentation. Buchner's discovery surprisingly didn't come from attempts to ferment yeast at all. Rather, he was attempting to help his brother Hans, who was trying to extract pathogenic substances and cells for therapeutic research. Hans was struggling in extracting cell fluid in its purest state, so Buchner decided to make some attempts as well, trying his hand with yeast cells. Buchner was able to succeed through the following process. He first pulverized the yeast cells with a mortar. He then added a mixture of quartz and diatomaceous earth to the pulverized cells, which led to the formation of a thick paste. He then wrapped the paste in canvas and put the wrapped paste under a press that exerted 90 kilograms per square centimeter of pressure. This process led to the extraction of approximately half a liter of fluid from one kilogram of yeast. Once he extracted the cell fluid, Buchner's main concern was preserving it so that he could get it to his brother to research further. So, to preserve the fluid, he added a sucrose solution to it, since sugar was already well known as a preservative. However, adding the solution had an unintended effect that Buchner easily noticed. Over time, the fluid started to bubble. Having done much research in fermentation, Buchner noticed what was going on. The remains of the yeast cells in the fluid solution were turning the sugar into alcohol, releasing carbon dioxide in the process. Buchner used his discovery on fermentation to build on Moritz Traub's theory of fermentation established in 1858, which stated that yeast fermentation was due to interactions with a specific kind of protein called an enzyme. Buchner labeled the enzymes in the yeast cell fluid solution as zymase and published his findings on the fermentation in 1897. Buchner's life after his discovery was very rewarding. He ended up marrying the daughter of a fellow Tübingen professor in 1900, and together they had four children, one which unfortunately died in infancy. In 1907, he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, 
for his biochemical researches and his discovery of cell-free fermentation. A few years after winning the prize, however, Buchner's life was cut short. In 1915, he joined the German army once again to fight in World War I, where he was quickly promoted but then was exempted from his duties and summoned back to his academic studies. However, when America entered the war in 1917, he volunteered into the army once again, and while serving in Romania, was wounded by shrapnel, and two days later, he died from his wounds. He was 57 years old. In proving that mechanical properties of cells can still work without the need to be alive, Buchner helped found an entire new branch of science, biochemistry. Although many credit the foundation of biochemistry to different scientists, Buchner was absolutely one of the founding fathers. A quote that sums up Buchner's discovery well is one from his Nobel lecture, which stated, We are seeing the cells of plants and animals more and more clearly as chemical factories, where the various products are manufactured in separate workshops. The enzymes act as the overseers. Buchner's discovery was one of great importance as it ended the debate between the mechanists and the vitalists and helped lead to a new era where scientists looked upon the cell with an entirely new perspective. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more videos about scientific progress in this time. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.